Hey guys, Orf Eagle here bringing you a brand new video today. Uh, today I am really excited to bring you this video. It's one I've been waiting to do for a while. Um, I am joined by none other than Negative Zero, the author of the new HGS map Fissure. Um, you might be wondering why I am doing this video, seeing that I already, my most recent video was a uh, skill jump tutorial video for this map already. Uh, at the time that I released it, uh, this map hadn't even hit uh, the HCS uh, playlist in rotation. Um, but at the time of this recording, it has uh, Refuge by Pawn Jones, Echelon by Squally de Beans, and this map, Fissure, have hit the HCS rotation playlist. Um, the Fissure is Oddball, Echelon is Oddball, and Sync, uh, Refuge, it was called Sanctum, is um, Slayer and a modified version of CTF. We can get more into those later. Uh, today I'm specifically talking about Fissure because I have some uh, really cool events that unfolded to share with you guys. But um, So I took the initiative, as you, as you guys saw, before these maps were released to the, into uh, the playlist, I wanted to find as many skill jumps as possible. And um, I set out and did that for Echelon and Fissure. And I was not aware that as the days were leading up to the map's release dates, the authors were changing them. And I found a ton of jumps on this map fissure and uh, negative zero. Actually, uh, you can check the comments. He commented on the video and had to vir virtually patch everything I, <laughs> I, I wanted to do. So um, <laughs> he had some parameters set by uh, strong side and 343. So, for, th for those of you who don't know, um, Negative Zero does not work for 3 for 3 Industries, but he is uh, a great forager, as long as with those other names I mentioned. And he was kind of tasked by 3 for 3 Industries to make, um, to either make or, or kind of uh, tinker and tweak a, cur a map he already made for HCS. And so they approached him, and he did that, resulting in Fissure. And, but it had to um, meet certain parameters. Uh, you guys can have probably read it in the article on Waypoint, but um, frame rate, gameplay, flow, style, all that had to meet certain parameters by 343. Well, uh, Negative Zero actually reached out to me uh, for my input on skill jumps and map glitches, uh, knowing that's something that I love to do, and I very happily agreed. So um, I am very excited to say that he and I worked uh, for quite a few hours together uh, uh, the day before 343 wanted this map re uh, ready to go for um, release into the playlist. So he and I worked to patch jumps, patch weird movement things, uh, and then um, make certain skill jumps easier, um, make them uh, accessible, and we're we can go we're gonna go through and show you all that here. I wanted to just introduce you guys to negative and and. This has been a really cool experience uh, for me personally. I never thought I'd be able to directly impact Halo in, in, in this way. So I want to thank Negative for the opportunity. I'm quite flattered he asked for my input. I know I already made a video before, but we're going to kind of quickly go over what exists now. Now, as a forewarning, this map that we're on is the most recent version and probably won't change too much. Um, if you if you play in the HCS playlist and and play on this map in Oddball, it's at, at the time of this recording. If you look at the upload date, it is not the same map. Negative informed me that they actually took uh, a, a a few hours old version of the map before we changed a few things, and so that is currently in the rotation. And then within a certain period of time soon, there will be a final version of the map in tournament competitive play, which will be. I'm pretty sure this map, or maybe a few tweaks, but so there may be a few things that are different when you play it in the playlist. But yeah, so let's go ahead and move forward. So first off, uh, negative. If you could tell us like what the overall goal of this map, your inspiration and stuff for this was, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, um, I don't know. I guess Fissure kind of started out as uh, a design I wanted to do, kind of I don't know, simpler Halo design, kind of something that harkened back to. Uh, older Halo map design instead of this new kind of Halo stuff. And uh, right. I think that's actually what helped them pick it, because, you know, with their whole goal of kind of slowing HCS down, yeah. uh, I think they were kind of also looking at maps that 
did that as well. And so I think that was a huge push in uh, why they may have picked this map. Yeah, I, even for my time, the few times I played it in eyeball, I did feel like there was a lot more, because it was a lot more open, you were able to be a little bit more calm with decision making because you could see, you can see more around you and kind of make more informed decisions and not be so rushed to make movement. But um, yeah, it's been a really, it, I really like it. It has definitely a guardian feel to it, um, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited. So f for you guys, we're going to go through and and share and even negative will kind of share the creative process and the technical process he had to take with certain things and also address some certain thoughts and ideas I had and why they actually aren't implemented. So um, the first thing will probably hit what's probably been removed and the biggest things removed. So if you don't remember in the in the video I recently uploaded, I point out that there was an invisible blocker over here. Um, now I'm also going to say that I didn't know that negative would see my video. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, I had no idea. So I actually assumed because something's changed from when I played on it to the point I made the video, I thought because things had already changed, that would be the final final iteration. And so I assumed that, you know, these things I found were almost permanent. Uh, I was very wrong. And also, um, because of what I found, things had to change because um, the jumps and things found in this map have to be within map boundaries. So a lot of these invisible blocker things, a lot of underside uh, hiding spots are no longer a thing. So like I said, for example, this, where you're able to kind of like sit up here for, you know, and sit um, around the wall. Uh, as much as I thought that'd be a cool spot, uh, it's no longer a thing and that's for both sides. Also, if you'll see, uh, it was on red, yeah. So this was the side I would normally do it. I would, uh, I was able to kind of sit under there and kind of, um, you know, hide underneath this ledge. Uh, negative had to patch that. That's something we worked on. I believe the clamber point is removed as well. So, and again, the reason why is because, you know, even from what negative said, and they don't want things outside of the map or no invisible, <laughs> no invisible floating basically is the definition. Right. Yeah. Um, it a lot of that was just down to my like sloppy kind of invisible blockers, and he just managed to find a few of them that you could stand on. So yeah, those so, had to go for sure. Now uh, again, I'm going to say I've said it before. <laughs> um, I know some of you guys have been having your fun with my uh, <laughs> saying what's possible and what's not. I actually talk with um, Squally the Beans about Echelon and that one jump. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but <laughs> uh, suffice it to say, it, even even out of his mouth, it wasn't initially possible to sit in that one spot. So I'm just saying that to say, even to this day, even right now, even with the the guy who made the map here, there might be things that we that will have to be ironed out later. Um, I'm not taking credit for making the map at all. Um, I just kind of know I, I I this was a really cool collaboration. I'm just gonna say it outright. His <laughs> overall prowess with forging and then my knowledge with what to look for with skill jumps really was a cool combined effort to really kind of, I, I see things from one perspective and he sees it from another and it was a cool, it was a cool collab. So, um, and yeah, I, that's definitely something yeah. uh, the forge community doesn't get a lot of, like even, you know, we can get some competitive play on some of our maps, but even then it's just like skill jumping is never really talked about right that much anyway so and and to me personally halo 5 that's what makes it so endearing to me is is the skill jumps that's what makes like plaza and um the rig so great is the amount of skill jumps that are com perfectly mm -hmm. acceptable within map boundaries so um that so i came up from that perspective so i was able so for example if you remember in my first in my first fissure video this map or uh, this jump down here near the lift um, I, I had knew I had shown it was possible to do a kneecap from here to up there, but this was angled in such a way that made it very very difficult. So with a little tweaking, um, uh, negative was able to just position it ever so slightly that it makes it a look fairly more consistent to hit it. It's still difficult. Uh, we still wanted to have. Uh, re um, retain a level of difficulty to all these jumps, just not like without any margin of error. Like, <laughs> not that like do one thing wrong and completely mess up. Just if you can do it under pressure, great. Um, it, it is still possible to mess up, like right there. You know, so so it, there's still there's still uh, 
skill to it. It's just now a little bit more feasible. Um, we've ironed out a few. Um, I think I brought it up before, also in Echelon. There was a few spots where if you like thrust and slide, it removes um, so your momentum when you do a thrust slide. Um, he worked on ironing those out. It's still not perfect. I mean, it's a it's a project in time, but um, that's definitely mm -hmm. something that's I think you know pretty cool that we're able to do. Uh, so so that one and that applies for both sides. So happy to say this is a lot more manageable. Um, still easy to mess up as you saw there, but definitely you can see. Because it's perpendicular to, the, uh, to that, um, it does make it a little bit easier. Instead of hooking you all the way over there. The other thing that we that we tweaked is this window. I don't think I brought it up in my initial video, but I my initial thought when playing with this is that this window kind of was like not purposeless. Like it allowed you a sight line, but you couldn't really hide behind it anyway. But it was too small for you to clamber or get through in the initial iteration. And so when we talked about it. Um, I thought it'd be cool from 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 a, a competitive standpoint. I want to be able to have um, sometimes options uh, for angles of approach. And with the way this was, you you could see someone here and shoot them, but you you had to navigate through here. You could either go up like this and go around, and and that was it. There was no other angle of approach except I think going through through here. So something that we worked on is again we want to implement skill jumps. But nothing too drastic or like completely change the flow, but um, things that if you're able to do it and pull it off in game, it, it would give you a tactical advantage. So one of the things was being able to, and see I even messed it up, but we angled this in such a way where if you do a thrust and hold jump, you can uh, thrust up to clamber and done perfectly, you can even do it without clambering. It'll give you that that kind of goal to practice and, and grind these jumps out when, in the same way that when Halo 5 first came out, people did that with Coliseum and Plaza. Now you can do it here and we, we put in just enough things to where there is a level of mastery that you can't attain. It's just going to take a lot of time and practice to get there, which is one of the greatest things about skill jump. So, uh, and so with that, so not only there, but also with this part, um, you're able to, there I messed up. So you can see it's still it's not easy to do these, but done right, yeah, you can clamber. And so we he widened these out a bit because I did I did think that you know in an engagement, um, sure he can shoot through here, but and I'm kind of cornered. Uh, I feel very vulnerable here, and that isn't a bad thing in and of itself. But I don't have much options, and there isn't really room to outmaneuver or outplay the enemy. So we just thought it might provide some variety. Uh, to clamber there, other and and you have to do that jump. Otherwise, you really you could probably do a thrust bump here. Yeah, or yeah. So maybe not. So it, it just really forces you to to master those skill jumps to a point where you're able to pull them out in game. That will be really useful. So yeah. So I think it's only accessible through there. Um, another thing is we did retain these um, this in here. Uh, it, it, it is something that was very. Um, that he and I both kind of agree that was could be a tactical advantage and not overly abusive because you are exposed. Yet at the same time, it does and it is difficult to do. So there is a risk in doing it. We don't want to make skill jumps so easy that there's no risk and that they're just completely advantageous. Um, it it does that. That's where the skill gap lies, in my opinion. So we were able to do that. Um, also, and we were trying to work out like. <laughs> so over here, like you're able to sit up there. So we, I thought it would be possible to sit on all of them. So we tested out. He removed this piece, and I was. It, it, it's physically possible to stand up there, but with this piece there and that piece, I can't seem to work out. Work, work it out. Maybe you guys can. Again, it's gonna take a lot of time before we completely iron out these these jumps. But I've yet to hit that jump. If you could, that takes a lot of technical skill. I don't know how advantageous it would be, but yeah. So um, you know, we left things there to be to be explored. Um, inversely, though, uh, certain things we didn't want to keep because of just how cheap they would be. So, for example, this spot right here, you were able in the right way be able to set up there, and that's a little high, especially for like coming up here. There's like no visual. Like you can even turn around here. And look and you wouldn't see that guy if he was sitting all the way up there so that's something that he patched this one was actually what would you say negative that no pros attempted that or they did no I've never seen that jump before okay so 
Yeah, so yeah, ne- n- Negative was um, given feedback from Strongside, who spoke on behalf of the pros when they were doing their scrims and testing for this map. And did you also watch the gameplay from pros to kind of like... Yeah, I watched a yeah. lot of the gameplay. And so uh, thankfully I can actually say that I was the, you know... I think this is a very cool jump, but also I think advantageous. And it, is, it isn't so big, but... Um, so that remains unchanged. One now he, here's something where my, one of my ideas got next. Um, I really felt for like down here this this platform this blue underpass um, for both red and blue. I really felt the desire to go and do this jump. But no matter what way, no matter how, it's basic. It's impossible from both from what both negative and I know. And so what I thought is because of this layout. If there were enemies up here, up here, I don't, I didn't, I didn't feel, I felt very vulnerable here because there's no escape route besides up the lift, which if there's an enemy actually up here, they can just pre-nade you. So I didn't like how exposed and, and like vulnerable I was in, in all of that. With that being said, I had the idea of actually tweaking the placement of that bottom platform a bit. And it had to be done very precisely but being able to do a thrust slide up to there. Uh, I changed the angle a bit and changed the the, the um, distance, but um, as it stands, this this is a, once you're in that area, there is a area to, you, you don't have much of an escape route. And we were actually talking to Squally De Beans and he, he made a good point. If you guys remember the um, map countdown, which uh, from Halo Reach, uh, the, there was an area, the bottom mid was to be avoided like the like the plague because of just how vulnerable you were and there really wasn't an escape route and he did make a good point that um one of the biggest uh aspects of that was if you were able to make it through there without like getting out of there quickly or whatnot and you were able to make it through alive that was kind of a victory in and of itself so that's what he kind of assimilated to this area is being able to like maybe get an engagement here and come out alive because of just how exposed you are and now with the removal of ground pound and spartan charge like i could see like you can sprint thrust into a spartan charge this way but now that that's removed you're you're kind of here for a long time so it does add that level of um skill in in and of itself there you, you're just once you're here and you're in engagement you the only option you have is to get into a gunfight um also um strong side did nix this idea uh, lengthening this out and tilting it because they didn't want this to connect to be able to go from 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 here to there. They thought it was just a little bit. It could change the flow of the gameplay too much. Being able to now have another area of the map accessible where it wasn't before, and it's just like a whole another area. No ma- and like from a uh, or not a whole new area, a whole new approach to, to that area that wasn't there in the first place so they nixed that um which is fine i mean i completely understand but basically everything else i think was was left so the other the other thing that we changed was i believe yes in here we have the um uh he changed so so in here i i think i mentioned before in my video i'm not sure but i thought it'd be really cool to be able to do a thrust light off one of these but because of the lego looking nature of the blocks it would be impossible because your legs would clip on the on the edges on the corners uh he did put invisible blockers in between so it is possible but it is very difficult and the reason why is for some reason <gasps> i've done this over and over again <laughs> the edges clip your spartan for some reason don't know why and i can't do a normal thrust light off of it but if you approach it and if you del- if you basically delay the timing enough it will work. It's just, it is not natural. And when I say natural, you're normally used to like, for example, if you're sprinting up here and you want to thrust slide, you know, you can hit the edge and then do something like that. Well, for some reason, these edges of the block don't allow that. So you have to delay the timing. And so it kind of forces you to be a little bit more aware. Uh, there, I messed it up. But it is possible. You just have to get used to a different timing, a different rhythm. There's now even a bigger um, skill use in there, I think. Uh, so that's for, that goes for both sides. It is possible. It just takes a lot of playing around with to get used to. I, I'm trying to think. There was also an issue with here. Um, if you were like eye level with this, um, 
even even if you were high up, you wouldn't be able to clamber. For some reason, I believe that's ironed out. The rocket launcher. Go ahead and... <laughs> Negative, you wouldn't mind going and tell... Uh, this has a lovely history. Right. Um, so what I'll I want to do... i explain it as best I can. Yeah, so <laughs> one time I went to Combat Evolve this and it didn't work. And then I asked Negative why, and this is what... <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is the story. So... <laughs> Sometimes in Forge, objects aren't exactly what they look like. There's some, a lot of objects are kind of made from other objects, and so there's kind of just this leftover ghost geometry there. And a lot of times, you know, your Spartan won't ever interact with it, like ever. Like it's just, it, so uh, you, you wouldn't think it ever affect the game. But sometimes it'll just have this random, you know, effect that, for instance, plasma grenade explosions don't travel through it. So if you would ever try and combat evolve. This rocket launcher, you know, about a week ago or a few days ago, nothing would happen. The, the, it would just sit there, and it looked like the nade just didn't do anything. So I just, I finally narrowed it down to just being these cylinder wall pieces you can kind of see here in bottom mid, and I just ended up bumping them down a bit, just so uh, that little ghost doesn't doesn't flip in anymore. And uh, you can finally combat evolve the uh, the rocket launcher now. Yeah, that's something that I was very confused by. What was it that? That I it, so I went to Forge One myself just to play around to see if I could fix it, and I changed the physics from phase to uh, natural or normal, and right. it was possible. Right. And he legit had a brain aneurysm. <laughs> He's like, "How is that possible?" Like, <laughs> I have no idea. I don't do Forge, so I think yeah, <laughs> I think putting that on normal and it just ended up you know kind of pushing it up a bit just enough so that it wasn't interfering with those rings anymore. Um, but unfortunately, having it also on normal had the effect of you can actually now move around the plate. But so right. I couldn't do that. Yeah. So I had to figure out a way around that. And finally, that was just you know narrowing it down to that piece. So, but yeah, you can finally able to be combat of all. So, so with this, um, ne negative. Uh, what were you saying about this ledge up here and with its height and distance? Um. Right. So originally. Uh, when we first started testing the map, uh, that this this platform was pulled out toward mid a lot more. You actually could make the jump from mid to here. Um, and it, it wasn't that hard. Again, it was just sort of, you know, that kind of skill jump. But uh, right. it just, we just found it better uh, for two reasons. One, it kind of just helps the flow of the map. It, it yeah. kind of, you know, it segregates you more. It makes movement a bit more purposeful, yeah. pushing it back. But it also kind of disempowers the people up here because it gives them a bit less cover with, the, with right. the platform being smaller so they have to back away further before they're not being shot anymore so that pushing that back was kind of a big help with both of those issues and from a skill jump perspective it is still possible but it's a lot harder like i you right. you have to hit it there's just a lot more skill involved you know if you can hit it's not much of a skill jump if it if it takes very little skill right you just have to basically hit you know it's not it's not like there's like you have like a set distance, and if you do it like one degree less, your spirit is, and that it's just it, you have you have to get it right, or else it won't work at all, right? And and you can do it with practice, and maybe you you'll become you know really good. It's just um, they don't want it just so accessible that it's overly abused. And that was one of the things that I know negative communicated with me is that strong side communicated yes. with him is that these jumps can't be overly abused. And so when he said that, I took the time to kind of think, well, I don't want these jumps to be easy, but at the same time, not so impossible that they're just, you know, disregarded. Never used. Right, yeah. but not used incessantly. So you know, each of these jumps, there, there's basically a risk with it, which I think is a good fair trade-off. So, um, yeah, so I, I mean, with everything, it's like it is possible to mess up, I think, on virtually all of them. Which gives it that risk, and if you're able to pull it off in game, it gives it a high reward. Um, some more high than others. You know, I, I will admit, like this one isn't the most revolutionary jump. You know, instead of going from here to here, you know, you, you do have to clamber, but like, you know, it, that's just one aspect of it. So I'm sure over time, if you guys find anything that you feel might be useful or anything. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. negative did say. What would you say that strong? Oh, no changes can be made to the map without uh, strong side or right. Unishek's permission. Now, so when we, when right. we, yeah, I'm, yeah, no, okay. yeah, I just I can't make any changes uh, unless it goes through them first at this point. So even if you so go, that doesn't mean so if you guys feel 
find anything or have any suggestions or concerns or you find a glitch or um oh right yeah so if there's anything like that you can still send it negatives way or even my way like um if it's more of a skill right. jump perspective um i i, I it probably be easier for me to discern whether it's like possible or it's just a glitch i don't know but if it's something more i don't know gameplay i don't know um we're still open Th this isn't the final iteration like i said uh this will evolve minutely over time N nothing too drastic right um and you know if if probably what's i'm, I'm just gonna guess that over time as this map is and, uh, and the other two maps are observed there may be jumps that i thought weren't that bad that maybe start being abused and we have to redact it i i don't know what well, we'll, we're going to continue talking about it i mean i'm not taking credit for this map at all just i'm you know happy to have a input with the skill jumps and from my perspective i'm happy to say that i i feel like these all have a a, a, fair, a really good amount of skill with a high risk high reward aspect to it so yeah so i'm, I'm happy to say you know, i was able you know this is I'm not going to lie, this is a really cool opportunity that I'm very thankful for Negative for, and that, to me, is something that I'm, I'm, to be honest, I know I don't kind of seem like, I'm over the moon to be able to have a direct hand <laughs> in, in shaping this, and if at some point I see the pros doing my jumps, are that's, that's awesome, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I just want to say, uh, I, I do appreciate the help, man. Uh, these Forge maps are always a huge collaborative effort. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, like, work on these. And I've, you know, never been able to have someone, you know, I've never, like, I never thought of even having a jumper look at a, look at a Forge map before. But having the opportunity, that yeah. this is a really cool collaboration here. I, I think, I think it, it could be a cool, like, meta, like, just moving forward, just having that. Oh, for like, sure. That, that marriage of like forger and jumper and and both become more educated about the other as time progresses I think which yeah. is benefit the other yeah, community yeah. overall so uh, with that I'm gonna wrap the video thank you guys very much for tuning in thank you to negative for the awesome opportunity if at any point you know it I know uh, Squally to beans asked me a little bit about a few things for echelon I didn't have I only tweaked I think one or two two or three things not near the impact I had on this map but so with that I'm gonna say thank you guys uh, for tuning in if you liked please be sure to um, go ahead and subscribe uh, I think negative has a channel as well be sure to give him uh, a check I'll leave a yeah. link in the description down below and um, yeah I look forward to see what this holds in the future I'll see you guys in the next one peace